about an out-of-this-world story. A Filipino medical doctor and avid astronomer gets the surprise of his life after an asteroid was recently named after him. The Paris-based organization International Astronomical Union officially named Minor Planet 1993 FN41 as 7431 Jet Aguilar in honor of neurosurgeon Dr. Jose Francisco Jet Aguilar. Dr. Jet now joins us here on New Day. Hi, Dr. Jet. Glad to talk to you this morning. Hi, Paul. Thank you for having me. Doc, wow. First of all, congratulations. You now join the growing list of Filipino astronomers and scientists who have asteroids named in their honor. Now, this is unusual because you're not a career astronomer. You're a, a neurosurgeon. How did this all happen and how did you find out and what was your reaction? Well, actually, I'm an amateur astronomer uh, for uh, since 2003. I'm, with the, I'm the vice president of the Astronomical League of the Philippines and our advocacy is to promote astronomy for our countrymen right and uh, i think it's about in 2020 when uh, the science uh, astronomy writers uh, miss imelda hoson and edwin aguirre submitted my name to the minor uh, the uh, uh, working group of the uh, small bodies nomenclature of the iau uh, because they are the ones who officially name asteroids no? uh, after people no? and uh, it is based on my our advocacy for for astronomy in the country, as well as uh, I've been working for more than 20 years as a neurosurgeon at the Philippine Children's Medical Center, uh, treating uh, children with uh, spine and brain disorders. And uh, Ms. Hoson and Mr. Aguirre came to know about this. That's why they, they recommended me. In fact, we want the whole world to know about the kind of work that you're doing, and we'll talk more about this special work that you do. But let's go back to this um, asteroid. The 7431 Jet Aguilar is an eight-kilometer-wide asteroid. Malit lang pala to, Doc. Is it big or small? I mean, you did mention, um, you know, the organization that that uh, that looks out for small bodies. Uh, is this a, is this a, a big asteroid? It's orbiting the the sun between Mars and Jupiter. Uh, and as an avid amateur uh, astronomer, what do you know about this asteroid? What can you tell us? Well, this asteroid is actually average in size. Now, asteroids can range in size from a few meters to more than 10,000 kilometers. No? The first asteroid that was discovered, uh, Ceres, is uh, almost 10,000 kilometers. No? So this is only eight kilometers. Uh, uh, it orbits the sun at uh, the average distance of around 463 million kilometers. No? The Earth di sun distance is about 150 million kilometers. No? And for, for, for an asteroid to be actually a risk to the Earth, uh, it has to be about 195 million kilometers. So thankfully, uh, asteroid <laughs> 7431 is not a near-Earth asteroid. So it's okay, a very but... faint object now. And it's, uh, you can see it now if you have a big telescope in the constellation Sagittarius. Okay, I think I'm glad we got that settled because I think that's what's that what that's what's on everybody's mind. Is it that big? Is it going to pass near Earth? Could it possibly hit us? I think we've watched too many Hollywood movies. Now, well, Doc, the body. Well, uh, eight kilometers yes. is enough to to cause damage, right? It, it's yes. uh, like if you watch the movie, don't look up. It's up. Uh, yes. And the asteroid that caused extinction of our dinosaurs is about ten kilometers wide. Only wow. Okay. Listen to you talk about uh, astronomy is, is amazing. And, but here's the thing. You're not a career astronomer. You are a neurosurgeon. The body assigned to give names to smaller solar, body, uh, solar system bodies describes you as, quote, a Filipino neurosurgeon who has saved over 1,000 children by volunteering his time and surgical expertise to treat their congenital malformations and brain tumors. Doc, saludo kami sa inyo. You're doing some fantastic work despite your busy Thank schedule. You. As a professional doctor, neurosurgeon, when and how did you discover your fascination for the universe and the solar system? Well, actually, it's been a childhood passion of mine. And uh, when I was already a neurosurgeon, I, I already found the time uh, to go into it. And nowadays, it's very easy to go into amateur astronomy because uh, the equipment are cheaper now. You, you can even use your cell phone. Okay. Uh, and uh, it is a good way for me to impart to my children and to the young people interest uh, appreciating the beauty of the heavens and in a way kindle their interest in science uh, so uh, uh, it became a passion of mine uh, and that's why we also do it in our uh, society right 
And really hearing you talk about it, uh, you know, I can really sort of sense the passion that you have for viewing these, these heavenly bodies. Doc, you know, how do you balance being a neurosurgeon uh, with your passions for um, astronomy? And bang uh, advice mo for, for people who want to get into this, this uh, amazing study that you have? Uh, what's the best way to get started? Well, uh, like I said, uh, equipment are cheaper now. So you, you can uh, first is join the, the amateur groups in the country. Uh, there are several and they are available in the social media groups. And you can learn from them how to start. No? And uh, balancing time is actually very easy. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, astronomy, the sky is free. You can look at it anytime. And uh, you can work at the same time. <laughs> so it's a very good hobby and a very uh, affordable one uh, okay. in terms of... Uh, uh, money and time management. There you go. Well, as we say, the sky's the limit. Where for you, it's not even the limit because it goes beyond that. Uh, congratulations to you again, Dr. Jet. Not many people can lay claim to having a heavenly body named after them. Thank you so much for joining us this morning here on New Day.